Our next speaker is our second speaker of the day to have uh, written an open source testing framework while working at ThoughtWorks. Uh, please welcome Pete Hodgson. Okay, so hi, uh, my name's Pete Hodgson. Uh, uh, as Dante said, uh, I work at a company called ThoughtWorks. We're hiring, we're an awesome company, come talk to me. <laughs> this is like the Bay Area tradition, you have to put this slide in here. Um, I'm also the maintainer of a, a testing tool called Frank. Um, and it's, uh, well, I'm gonna give you a really quick two minute tour of, of, uh, of Frank. Um, I actually wanna spend a lot of this talk not talking about Frank uh, specifically, but I wanted to give you a, a quick demo of, of what Frank is about. Um, so you can see on the right hand side here, we've got a native iOS application uh, in running in a simulator. And on the left hand side, we have a test script. In this case, it's a cucumber test script. Um, and it's clicking on things and swiping on things and checking the values of things. Kind of uh, pretty standard testing stuff if you're coming from a web world, uh, I would say. So, um, so what, does, what does Frank do? So Frank is uh, a UI automation tool for native iOS applications. So um, my, my one sentence is it's kind of like WebDriver, but for native iOS applications. Um, it lets you uh, write your tests using uh, the language and the tooling that you want. So uh, we support uh, Cucumber, uh, Straight Ruby, uh, Java, and all of the uh, ecosystem around that, um, Python, and all of the ecosystem around that. Um, we're really big and focused from the get-go uh, integration with CI um, and kind of integration in, in general with things outside of your application. Uh, Frank provides very powerful view selection facilities. Um, so the ability to drill into parts of your view hierarchy to select which parts of the view you want to uh, interact with or inspect. Um, and as part of that, uh, it also allows you to kind of interactively explore uh, the state of your running application using a, uh, a little tool called Symbiote. Uh, so I'm gonna try and give you guys a live demo of Symbiote. This could all go horribly wrong. Here's this uh, simulator again. Uh, and here on the left-hand side here is, uh, is Symbiote. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but the kind of the, the live running application is, the state of it is being reflected in uh, this web page over here. Um, and I can have a look at this thing and inspect the kind of the live state of the UI. Uh, this, this shows me the view hierarchy. Obviously, this is not a particularly interesting application, one, two, three, four. Um, but uh, it should give you the idea that this, this tool allows you to really kind of get an insight into uh, the current state of your application. Uh, and you can kind of click on things and find out more details about them. Uh, all this stuff is useful for test automation purposes. Uh, and you can also look at these accessibility elements, which are kind of the main, your most useful tool when automating a native iOS application. Uh, I can click on one of these guys and up here, and this doesn't come across very well because this, uh, this uh, projector is so, well, you know, when I'm projecting the text is very small, but this is the uh, view selector language I was talking about. Uh, and I can see what this does. So I can say, uh, what does this selector select? And it selects this thing down here. I can also actually uh, flash it in the application. And again, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, I can flash that and, and see what that view selector does. And I can also actually test what happens when I touch using these things. So I can write, uh, duh, 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 duh. oh, okay. So I can say, uh, let me select a view marked uh, edit, say, if I wanna touch this guy at the top right. And then I can see that it selects the right thing. Oh, and that's actually a perfect example of why I'd want to do this. So it turns out that there's more than one thing I can select. Uh, so maybe I want to select a thing called root and check that that is the right thing. And then I can actually touch it uh, and check what that does with my live running application. So this is something that I think is, is really, really useful. Uh, it's also something that you can use if you, even if you're not using Frank uh, to automate your tests, if you're using some other tool, this is still really useful, particularly for a QA that doesn't have the ability to look uh, deep inside their application code to get an idea for the view hierarchy. So um, there's loads more I could talk about with Frank, but I'm actually not going to do that right now. Um, I would encourage you to go to the website, testingwithfrank.com, 
um, or come find me. Uh, I, I love talking about this stuff. I will talk your ear off, I promise. So, or not I promise, because then you won't come find me. Come and talk to me if you want to know more about Frank. Uh, I, I love talking about it. Um, so I'm going to talk about cross-platform testing for mobile in general. Um, so here's your application that you're testing. Uh, and here's your test scripts that you're using to test your application. Uh, and in order to do that, you need some kind of automation driver. So you need something to kind of bridge the gap between your application and uh, your test scripts. Uh, so in this talk, I'm going to be using kind of Frank as the example automation driver. But a lot of this stuff applies to, uh, to, to more than just Frank. Um, so let's have a look at what a, a test script, a naive test script, might look like. Uh, so in this test script, I'm typing my username into the username field. I'm typing my password into the password field. I'm touching the login button. And then I'm checking that I see like a login banner. Um, so this seems fairly easy to read, right? Because it's Ruby. Ruby is the best language in the world. Uh, <laughs> no Python haters? OK. <laughs> so um, I, I disagree. This is not easy to read. I just had to talk you through this. And uh, unless, you, unless you're immersed in this tool, it's actually pretty hard to, to understand this because it's very, very low level. It's not expressing user stuff. It's expressing touches and swipes and view selectors and all this boring kind of technical gunk. Uh, it's super fragile. Uh, when I change my UI, um, bits of this test are going to break. I've probably cut and paste this code. I've, I've done cut and paste reuse. Um, and so the, the, the test scripts that you, that you write if you're talking directly from uh, test script to automation tool um, are fragile. And the core problem here is there's no abstractions. So um, as I said, you're talking directly from um, your testing, your high level test script is kind of trying to talk directly to the automation driver. So, so what can we do to introduce some abstractions? Um, people in the web world have been facing this challenge for a while. And a very popular pattern, or a common pattern for solving this, is a thing called the page object pattern. Uh, so what does that look like? So here we are again with our test scripts talking directly to our automation driver. Uh, we want to um, make, uh, introduce some abstraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to create these, these little things called page objects over here. So uh, the role of these page objects is to abstract and encapsulate the low level uh, user interface and testing details of, uh, of your application. So essentially, each page object is kind of exposing um, an automation interface for, your, for those high-level testing scripts uh, on the left-hand side to use. Um, so what does one of these page objects look like? Let's take a look. So um, this is actually, when you look at it, a lot of this is the same code as before. Uh, so I've still got my typing into text fields and, and my uh, touching on buttons, uh, but it's been encapsulated in, um, in a nice way. So uh, it's being uh, represented using a nice interface, nicely. Um, nice descriptive names and a nice descriptive class. So if I've got one of these page objects, uh, let's have a look and see what my test scripts look like. So I would argue this is a lot easier to read. I don't think I have to explain to you uh, what this code is doing, um, because it's Ruby. Could be the same in Python. Um, so yeah, so, so this is the, the key thing here is, is these testing scripts are written in a language that you could almost show to a user of your application and they would understand. This is the domain language of your application. It's not talking about testing. I don't see anything about testing in this, in this code. I see the domain language of my application. Um, so, so really what's happening here is uh, these page objects is, are acting as a kind of an abstraction layer in your application. So uh, the stuff on the left-hand side is the user-focused stuff um, the, the, con the, the, the concepts inside your application, so logging in, uh, whether you're on the right screen, domain concepts, so if you're working um, in, if, you're, if you've got a transit app, there'd be ideas like uh, checking for the next bus, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the stuff on the right is the kind of the boring technical glue that you need to, to make this stuff happen. So um, this is the language of testing, it's swipes and gestures and waiting for elements to appear and selecting the right things in the view. Um, it's interesting to note that the stuff on the left, the user-facing stuff, doesn't change as often as the stuff on the right. The, the core concepts in your application actually don't change that frequently. Uh, the concept of logging in, the concept of checking for the next bus, and, and how you would do that in a, test, in a high-level test script uh, is, is fairly stable. The, the, the stuff on the right uh, tends to change more, more rapidly. So the way that you're selecting views, uh, the implementation of the, uh, of the view hierarchy, 
tends to tends to change more rapidly. And so these page objects act as a kind of um, uh, an insulating layer um, a, that decouples you so that your your uh, your high level scripts can be stable and maintainable and flexible over time, and your low level implementation details um, can can kind of flex without having to rewrite all of your testing scripts. Um, and another thing to note is as you move from left to right, I think I've already kind of said this, but um, as you move from, from right to left, things become less about the technology and less about the platform and more about the user and the domain of your application. So I said I was going to talk about cross-platform testing for mobile. I have not done anything. I haven't talked at all about cross-platform uh, or mobile. I've just talked about testing. So um, let me talk about cross-platform cross testing for mobile. So here we are uh, with our familiar diagram. And if you think about it, all this stuff on the right-hand side, um, this is all kind of the iPhone-specific stuff uh, inside of your testing system. Um, and if you think about it, these, these page objects here, they're kind of presenting an interface for your high-level, user-focused um, test scripts to talk to your iPhone. So they're, they're presenting a test interface to your application. Um, and this is an interface. You can swap out interfaces. So what's to stop you replacing your iPhone page objects with uh, web page objects? So um, let's take a look and see what these, uh, these look like uh, inside. So here I have um, the equivalent page object that I was showing for a frank test, but this is for a web driver stuff, a web driver test. Uh, so um, notice this is the exact same interface. My testing scripts can drive this page object exactly the same way as they drive my frank page object. And they don't even know that they're driving a web uh, UI rather than an iPhone UI. And this is the, the key concept here. Uh, and obviously, there's kind of web driver gunk inside of these page objects, uh, just like there's uh, iOS gunk inside of um, the iOS uh, page objects. Um, but again, the, the key thing is that this is insulated from uh, your, your high-level test scripts. And um, this same concept also applies uh, when you're testing uh, different platforms uh, on the same technology. So let's say, for example, uh, you're testing an iPad app and an iPhone app. So you, your transit app has uh, an iPhone app, and you, and you also have this, uh, like it's a universal app, so you have an app, iPad app as well. So uh, in this case, um, your page objects would still change a little bit, because when it comes down to it, your app is a different app. And the view selectors you use and the way that you accomplish these high-level goals, like logging in, are going to be different. Um, but you can still use the same underlying technology, so you can still use your happy uh, frank tests. Uh, so there's less to learn here, but um, it's not a freebie. Uh, you still have to um, map the, these concepts uh, in the correct way. So I've been describing this as, as an, uh, these page, ob page objects as an abstraction layer between uh, the user and the technology. Um, another way of thinking about this is uh, an abstraction layer between uh, the user and the platform you're testing on. So um, the goal here is you, you get to write your test once, your high-level uh, tests once, and you get to change them once and maintain them once, uh, but apply them to more than one platform. So that was talk number one, or possibly talk number two, because I did the frank introduction. Uh, talk number three, I'm going to talk very briefly about Apple's UI automation tool. So um, for those of you that don't know, it's the official uh, testing tool for um, for people who are writing iOS applications. So it's provided by Apple. Uh, it's very powerful. Apple know their platform very well, and they're able to get under the covers and do some things that other testing tools aren't able to do. Um, but I would say it's pretty restricted in what you can do. Uh, going to, um, to Jason's kind of things of, of what it allows you to do, uh, or, or, or the, the, the sniff test or the, the 10 things, I think Apple's tool fails a lot of those. Um, but I, I want to talk to you guys about an alternative uh, to UI automation uh, called public automation. Uh, so let, let's have a look at some of the existing alternatives to stock UI automation. So um, there's loads of situations where people um, haven't been happy with UI automation, and so they've written, written other tools. And some of them we're going to hear more about today. Um, and uh, these, these fall into two major categories. There's things that extend UI automation. So um, they take the base functionality that's available and they add to it. So they add better CI, they add better reporting, they add support for richer languages like Cucumber. Uh, and then there's this other class of tools, and Frank kind of falls into these, 
uh, that replace UI automation. So um, I think the approach that most of the, most of the people that built these tools would say that UI automation is just too hard to extend in a good way. Uh, so instead, uh, they've decided, I know for, 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 for Frank, we just decided to re-implement automation from scratch because we didn't think UI automation uh, had the, the core functionality we needed. Um, so this has worked, uh, but historically it's been a bit of a hack. So it's a pretty fragile approach because essentially we're kind of getting into the guts of Apple's uh, touch uh, eventing system and hacking into it in ways that Apple really don't want us to do. Uh, so it's been fragile. Uh, there tends to be missing functionality compared to UI automation. So some of the nice high-level concepts of gestures and swipes uh, are a little bit hard to implement. Um, and basically, it's a bunch of effort to replace what Apple have already done for us. Um, but it's been worthwhile because um, there's so much stuff we want to build on top of what Apple has done for us. So there's these two ideas, extending or replacing. And so uh, I, I say public automation is, is a third way. So um, this is a... Uh, a low-level library, or it's an Objective-C library that exposes Apple's own low-level UI automation framework. Um, and it, I'd say it's the best of both worlds. So it, it provides the power of Apple's touch synthesis implementation. So these guys can get really into the guts of, of their, uh, their platform and, and, and do great synthesis. Um, but it gives, gives everyone the freedom to build better integration and tooling on top of that. So I don't actually think that Apple are that clued up as to how to make a really good testing tool. That's OK. They don't need to. They can give us the low-level tools we need, and then we can build uh, the integration and tooling on top. Um, so public automation has been uh, Frank's uh, touch synthesis library since 1.0, which was um, uh, about a month or two ago. Um, and it replaced <coughs> KIF. So uh, KIF is actually a similar level tool of like low-level uh, touch synthesis. Um, and it's open source, and uh, it's up on GitHub have actually already had people submitting pull requests, which is uh, super awesome. Um, so I, this talk is mainly to the speakers um, to say, I think we should um, collaborate on some of this stuff and not have to re-implement uh, all of this boring touch synthesis is not fun, exciting, rock star stuff. It's just tedious and annoying, and it breaks when, when, the, when things change. So uh, I think this is a great alternative to that, uh, which gives us the best of both worlds. Um, I actually went faster than I was thinking I was going to do. So um, as I said, I, I, I really, really love talking about testing. And um, I, I encourage anyone who wants to ask me questions, really, really long questions, or get into loads and loads of details to come and find me uh, today, or tweet me, or email me, or whatever. But um, I think I do have a little bit of time to take questions. OK, so questions. Yeah, you mentioned the page object. Uh, in some cases, some shared components could be appear in multiple pages. Um, how to deal with that? Make the code simple, easy to follow. So how how do you how do you kind of reuse uh, how do you how do you reuse bits of test automation for bits of UI that are consistent that are reused across pages? Yeah. Is that is that the question? So I, I would say this is uh, we're 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 uh, writing software, and I would use the same approaches that I would use for for writing software. So composition and inheritance and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's say uh, we have a I have a login UI that's used across multiple uh, screens. I would represent that as a, uh, I don't know why I'd call that like a, a widget, page widget or widget object, uh, something like that. And then uh, you could compose, you could have instances of that inside of your page object and, and use that to, to share, the, share the implementation so you don't have to cut and paste, uh, which is the, you know, the key thing is to avoid bad, bad software development. Does that, does that help? Other questions? So uh, I look at Frank and also the similar tools, right? So uh, to my understanding, this is mainly support the native UI, right? Correct. So I mean, from our experience right now, more and more app, and uh, we make SDKs, yep. a lot of functionality become a web view. Yep. So do you have any work or thinking on this area? Uh, yeah, so, so long term, what I would like to do is actually uh, integrate WebDriver into have Frank have the ability to inject uh, WebDriver into, uh, that's my best, my best answer right now, I think, is to inject uh, a pure JavaScript implementation of, of WebDriver into a web view. And then, because uh, I don't want to re-implement, I definitely do not want to re-implement uh, a web testing tool. Um, but yeah, right now, it, it's actually, to be honest, it's something that Frank isn't that great at. Uh, there's other tools that um, probably do a better job right now. Um, but I don't think it's actually that much work to, 
to do that kind of stuff. I just realized I had a Steve Jobs style uh, one more thing. I've always wanted to do that. I'm going to be really quick and then um, take a question. So uh, one more thing. Um, so I'm kind of uh, doing a little pre-announcement for, for my friends over there at Less Painful. These guys are going to be talking to you about their testing cloud. And uh, the, as of fairly soon, I don't know when, but fairly soon, uh, they're going to be supporting running uh, frank tests in their cloud, which means that uh, you don't even need to uh, run your you don't even need a suite of devices. You can write your frank tests and uh, point them towards uh, their cloud of uh, physical devices. So it kind of gives you uh, an option for, for not having to maintain that stuff. So Frank is in the cloud. And now back to questions. <laughs> Hi, um, so as of today, uh, Frank is for iOS uh, test automation. Do you have a plan to expand uh, to Android uh, as well at some point? So no. uh, that's one question. And other one is uh, comments. So um, the cu cucumber is a very great, uh, you know, powerful, uh, you know, technology. I'm so, uh, you know, happy to know about that. But one of the problem I see, uh, their language pattern is different uh, by, you know, different plug, different tool. So Frank has uh, their own uh, language pattern, and Calabash has, uh, you know, their own. Even Calabash uh, language pattern is slightly different between you know, right. Android and iOS. Right. So my wish is, if we can have uh, you know some kind of a core standard uh, language uh, pattern, so that uh, you know Frank or you know Calabash can use uh, you know commonly, I think that that is a huge uh, benefit for you know mobile uh, testing uh, community. And okay. also uh, you know Frank and Calabash, you know their uh, concept and approach is pretty. Uh, you know, same or you know, similar, even though the focus is slightly different. So uh, if we see some kind of <laughs> collaboration uh, between two projects, it'll be also very nice you know, to the testing folks. OK, so uh, first question, uh, Android support. I, I don't have it, it, it. I actually don't think so. This is actually answering uh, both those first two questions. So I think trying to, um, trying to standardize at that high level uh, of Cucumber uh, is, is the wrong approach. So that was kind of what I was trying to get to with this, with this page object model, is even if you can share um, the same Cucumber steps, um, it's, it's not going to work in general because your iPhone app and your Android app are going to be different. So uh, let's say I want to write a test that, uh, that uh, takes me to the home screen. On, the, on an Android phone, I probably hit options and then hit the home button. On an iPhone, maybe there's uh, a tab, uh, a nav bar at the bottom, and I click the third one or something. So if I'm trying to share testing at that, that very high level, then essentially I don't get to share anything. And I have to re-implement um, Cucumber steps or the equivalent high-level test scripts. So the idea is by encapsulating that in page objects, uh, I don't need, um, I can use Calabash for, uh, for Android and Frank to drive my, uh, my iOS tests, still use the same high-level test scripts and have the page objects um, decouple that, the high-level testing stuff from, uh, from the, the boring stuff like which automation tool I'm using. Um, and then the third one, I mean, like, we, we kind of, so me, we, we went for, for beers the other night and we were talking about, it's kind of funny that we're kind of running in parallel tracks. Um, I think we're both kind of happy to be running in parallel tracks uh, um, I definitely would, wouldn't say there's rivalry. There's a lot of collaboration. And we've definitely worked on, we've had a lot of conversations about pulling out shared components. So public automation is a great example of that. Um, the the, the, the uh, select, view selector language that Frank uses is now available as a third party library that any other tool can use. Uh, Symbiote, the same thing. Uh, it wouldn't be that much work to integrate Symbiote into another library. So I think the, the end goal that I would like to get to is a common set of tools that people are mixing and matching in different ways to, sit, to fit their use cases, uh, rather than trying to kind of unify the whole world when people are heading in slightly different directions. All right. Thank you to Pete Hodgson.